This is what my blog looks like using the Go CMS. This is the default. I didn't do much tweaks at all besides setting my logos and creating blog posts. It is overall clean, organized. Not much I'd really change about it, to be honest. It's really fast too. Just refreshing, it's nearly instant. Getting started is really easy. If you just follow my step-by-step -step guide, you can get going in a matter of minutes. The first thing you're going to need is a computer, specifically on the cloud, so your website would be running 24-7. A service I like to use is called DigitalOcean, and if you use my link in the description, you'll get a free $100 credit to use them. They're as cheap as $5 a month, which is really, really cheap for what you get. I'm not saying to use DigitalOcean just to get those referrals. I genuinely prefer to use them. Anyways, once you sign up for an account, you would just go into a project, and then you would click on this green create button at the top right, then droplets. I'm just going to go through all of this really quick because I don't feel the need much explanation, but for the distribution, I'll choose CentOS 8 and make sure it's the latest version. For a plan, I'm just going to choose starter standard, and then I'll just choose the cheapest server of $5 a month. The specs you get here should be more than enough for Go CMS. For a data center region, just choose anything that's closest to you. I'll choose New York. I like to turn on monitoring so I know if the server is being stressed or not, like high CPU usage, high disk usage, high memory usage. For authentication, I'd really recommend you choose SSH keys, but I don't really want to show that because that'll take a little long. For now, password should be fine. You might not be brute force for a little while, so long as you choose a really long password, so make sure you choose a secure password. Something like this. Just make sure you save your password somewhere so you never lose it. But whenever you get the time, I'd recommend you switch over to SSH keys. There's tons of articles out there to teach you how to do that for CentOS 8. For a host name, just choose anything that makes sense. I'll say my blog. This is just a tutorial, so I'm not going to turn that on. Once you've done that, you'll wait for digital ocean to create your server. The server is made so now I can just click on the name here and it'll take you to the server dashboard. What we really want right now is a server IP, which you can see here. If you just click on it, it'll copy. Once you've copied your server's IP, you'll want to head over to your domain provider or Cloudflare if that's what you're using. Then you want to head over to your DNS settings. And then you would configure your custom resource records. Ignore this domain, it's just a throwaway domain since it's not used anymore. So since I want to use it at blog.roundbot.net, all I'll do is type in blog. We'll leave it as an A record. We'll leave it at the default of one hour. And for the IP4 address, that's where you would paste in your server's IP. So we'll paste that and then click on add. You can see that it save and now we know that blog.roundbot.net would be pointing to our server. Now let's start to actually configure our server and you'll want to SSH into your server using software called PuTTY. You can find the download link in the description but once you've got your IP and opened up PuTTY you would just paste that into your hostname or IP address input and we'll leave it at port 22. The CLI's font is also really small so you'd want to head over to window appearance. We'll change the font settings by clicking on this button and I'll set it to 20 and then just click on open. This is just a warning that says you've never opened up the server before. You can just click on yes to ignore it. We'll be prompted with a login request. You want to log in as root because that is your default user's username and then you'd want to paste in the really long password you made earlier. To paste you would just right click and then you just press enter. If you see that you already have login attempts even though this is the first time you've tried logging into your server, you can ignore that. It's just because there's bot scrapers out there that's trying to brute force into servers but if you have a super long password it would take them years so you might be fine. But again I'd recommend using an SSH key. To continue we have access to our server. Now we can start to install what we need. First off we want to install our HTTP server which will be nginx. To do so you type in sudo dnf install nginx. It'll ask you if you want to install everything, we'll just say yes. We'll do that again. And now that it's installed, we want to start up the nginx server by running sudo systemctl start nginx. And to make sure that it starts up every time the server restarts, if for some reason you need to, we'd run sudo systemctl enable nginx. At this point, you should have a working HTTP server. So if you visit your server's IP in your web browser, you should see this default web page. The next part is to install our MySQL database. We'll be using MariaDB. To install it, you would run the command sudo dnf install mariadb-server. We'll confirm the installation with Y. And just like we did with Nginx, we'll want to start and enable it. So sudo systemctl start MariaDB. That should start up your MariaDB server. And to make sure it starts up on a server reboot, we would run sudo systemctl enable MariaDB. To configure some basic settings, you would run the command sudo mysql underscore secure underscore installation. I'm only going to be using the database locally, so I'm not going to use a password for root. Just don't type anything and press enter. And when it asks you to set a root password, we'll say no. We'll remove anonymous users because we don't need that. We also don't want remote logins from another server, so why? We'll remove the test database with why. We'll reload by entering why. And once you see this thank you, you can expect that MySQL is working. The last part you'll need to install now is node.js. This command is a little bit longer, so bear with me in typing this. curl sl https colon slash slash rpm dot node source dot com forward slash setup underscore 12.x this line thing bash dash. You should hit enter and then it starts to download node.js. 
this. As you can see here, it tells you you need to run this command in order to install it. So sudo yum install dash y node.js. The installation is complete and to check that it's working, we can run the command node-v and then you see v12. Now we'll need to disable the Linux and we can do that real quick by running the command sudo set enforce zero, but this only disables it until your server restarts. If you want it to remain disabled on every server reboot, you'll need to edit a configuration file, but to do that, you'll want to run the command sudo yum install nano-y, which I already did but I had to cut out some police sirens. Now, we can inst now we'll need to install the go cli. You'll want to run sudo npm install dash g ghost cli at latest. The ghost cli is what we're going to use to install, start, and stop our ghost server, but we can't do that from a root user, so what we'll need to do is create a non-root user. To do so, we'll run the command sudo add user and whatever username you want, but I'll go with ghost user. You'll also want to set a password for it, so sudo passwd and then the username, which in my case was ghost user. And I'll just reuse my root password because I don't intend to actually differentiate between the users. So we'll just paste that in. And to confirm the password, you'll want to paste it again. And then a password should be set for that user. Now we we'll want to give our new user sudo access by running the command sudo usermod dash a capital G wheel, our username, which in my case was again ghost user. Now we'll want to set up the directory in which we want to actually install ghost on our server. So we'll just make one here, sudo mkdir-p slash var slash www slash ghost. Now that directory should exist. We'll want to make sure our non-root user has access to that directory by running sudo chown our non-root user's name ghost user and then that again ghost user and then the directory which is slash var slash www slash ghost. And to make sure that directory has the proper read write permissions we'll run sudo chmod 775 slash var slash www slash ghost. Wherever you decide to install your ghost server, you'll want to make sure that the directory is empty. We just made this directory, so we know it's empty, but if you are using another one, clear everything out. To start the installation, again, we can't use our root user, so let's switch users into the non-root user. sudo su dash ghost user, and we'll cd into the directory you wanted, cd slash var slash ww slash ghost, and then run ghost install. You can ignore this first warning by entering y, you can ignore this next warning by entering y, it's just warning you that it's not going to be able to configure things by itself so you're gonna have to do things manually but you're covered because I'm here to guide you. Once it's finished installing it's gonna ask you for some simple information. First one being your blog URL. This would be http colon slash slash your domain. In my case would be http colon slash slash blog dot roundbot dot net. We installed MySQL on the localhost so we'll just leave it as localhost. We'll use the default username of root. When installing MySQL we never set a password so I'll just not type in anything and hit enter. I don't care what my ghost database name is so I can leave it as ghost prod. It would ask you for sudo password so we'll just paste that in hit enter i don't care to set up a ghost mysql user so i'll just enter no we'll want to set up system nd by entering yes or y and finally we'll want to start ghost by entering y once you see this green prompt you should know that ghost is ready to use but you're not able to visit this link yet we still need to edit our nginx configuration before we do that we'll want to know our ghost server's port number so run ghost ls and then you should see that our server is running on port 2368 you'll want to remember that you want to switch back into your root user so you can edit the nginx next configuration so sudo su dash and now we can create our configuration file by running nano slash etc slash nginx slash conf dot d slash ghost blog dot conf if you look in the description, you'll find an nginx configuration that you can copy and paste. There'll only be two things you'll need to change, which will be your server name and your port number. My domain is supposed to be blog.rombot.net, so I'll change that appropriately. And my port number seems to already be correct at 2368. This might not always be the case. Sometimes GoCMS does use a different port number like 2369. So make sure you enter the port that you saw when running the command ghost.ls. Once you're sure that your domain and port number are correct, you can press Ctrl X, Enter Y, then press the Enter key to save that nginx configuration. Once that's done, we can restart nginx by running the command sudo service nginx restart. Or you can just reload, but I like to restart just to be safe. And at that point, you should be able to visit your blog domain and see that Ghost is ready to work with. There'll be some starting articles that you can read so you can get a better understanding of how to work with Ghost. I'd recommend reading those, but I'll be brief with how to use Ghost. To access your Ghost CMS as an admin, you want to visit your domain, and after it, you'll want to type in slash Ghost. You'll be greeted with an intro with it asking you to create an account. We'll click on that create your account button and for your site title i'll just say something like we are devs blog full name i'll say we are devs your email address would of course be whatever email you want in my case contact at wearedevs.com and for password you just choose whatever password works for you then we click on the button at the bottom i don't need to invite anyone so i'll just click on this i'll do this later button and then you have your admin dashboard 
and navigating to this general tab, everything's pretty straightforward. If you want to edit your title and description, you hit expand and then set it as whatever you want. I already chose weird desk blog and you can edit your description to whatever you feel like. You can set your time zone here, your icon, logo, all this other stuff. Design is where you would add your options for your navigation bar. You'll want to read all these articles, but once you've done that, you probably don't want them anymore. So you can just go ahead and delete those and then click on save. Code injection is where you'd want to install things like your Google Analytics tracking code and maybe even your Google Auto AdSense code. I use them myself with no problems. The integrations tab just tells you what additional features it supports from other services. Like if you were to paste a YouTube link into your blog post, it would automatically embed into a YouTube video. The labs tab is more for side stuff. Like if you're migrating from WordPress, you would use the ghost plugin on WordPress, export your content, and then you would just import it from here. Or you can export, delete, whatever you feel like doing here. Staff is where you'd invite other writers to your blog. I'm not going to talk too much about the tags and pages tab, but viewing the post tab, this is where you'd be spending most of your time. To create a new post, you would just click on this new post button. With WordPress, you get a more upfront editor, but with Ghost, you write more with markdowns, kind of like what you do on Discord or even Stack Overflow. So to write a heading, you would enter hashtag and it goes straight to big. If you do double heading, that'll be a heading two and it's slightly smaller. And, and if you don't do any markdown, you'll have your plain text. If you paste in a YouTube link or even some other embeddable links, it'll automatically embed. If you're going to be in the coding niche like me, you would enter the back tick three times, press space, and you'd start typing in your code and even enter whatever language it is here. The markdown is pretty much standard. It's the same as most other services, but if you wanted to look up a cheat sheet, the search on Google ghost markdown cheat sheet, and you should find this link and it'll tell you everything you can use. If you start an empty block, you should see this plus button to the left. It'll just give you some additional options that might not be so accessible through markdown, like an HTML block so you can make your page more customized. You can get rid of all the other posts that you didn't make. They were made just for you to read. So to get rid of them real quick, you would just head over to your staff tab. Then you should see this ghost user. You would click on it, click on the settings gear, click on delete user, and then download backup and delete user. Then if you look back in your post tab, you'll see it's all gone. We see that the status of our first post is still a draft. We never published it. Let's add some real content before we publish. And once your post is full of valuable content, you'll click on this publish button at the top right and then click publish. Once that's done, you can head over to your blog domain and on the homepage, you'll see your first blog post. You can click on it and then see it looks a lot like this. So that should be everything you need to know with getting started. If this video helped you out, please leave a like. I'd greatly appreciate that. I make general developer videos just like this one. So if you're interested, consider subscribing. Thank you for watching and have a good one.